welcome to Vader Video Toots, where we do tutorials for all levels of experience, or basically take the eck out of tech. Howdy and welcome to the Vader Video DSLR Viewfinder Simulator Project Instructional Video on how to use this really cool project in After Effects. Of course, one of the minor requirements that you will need to have is a copy of After Effects, and in this particular case, version CS6 or greater. If you happen to have stumbled across this video on YouTube or Vimeo, for example, and would like to find out where to get your hands on this project file, simply visit stockfootage.vadervideo.com go to AE projects and DSL viewfinder simulator and there will be several more here as time progresses and you will find all the information on how to acquire this project file so to just give you a little bit of background of how this project came to be a friend of mine that produced a movie needed a visual effect and the visual effect was basically to show the point of view of a person behind a DSLR, a camera, taking pictures. In this particular case, it happened to be a private investigator. So we wanted to enhance it a little bit, and I'm going to show you the original footage as it was. I thought you wanted to get the case files. I do. I have this case too, Jack. I have office rent, mortgage, food, hat. So as you can see, she was uh, taking a picture of something, and yeah, it's okay, and you got the two characters talking, and she's got office rent and food and mortgage and all that stuff. But let's have a look at the finished file after we implemented this wonderful project. I thought you wanted to get the case files. I do. I have this case too, Jack. I have office rent, mortgage, food, hat. So as you can see, it enhances and makes a little bit more sense because now we get the point of view of the actual photographer. In this case, it happens to be a young lady private investigator. So let's get started. Uh, before anything else, this is the original uh, After Effects project file, and we really don't want to clobber or destroy that. So the very first thing after you load it for the first time is do a save as and save it as something new. I'm just going to call this demo. You can call it whatever you want. But the key thing is, is we want to do this so that we don't destroy the original because uh, you don't want to have to go download it again and, you know, make a backup because Murphy's Law says that if you don't, he will kick your butt. So I'm going to just go through now with a quick overview of what's all here. And basically, in the project area of the project itself, you're going to find several folders, and they have pretty obvious names and explanations. So footage from you, this is where you would put your footage so that you kind of keep it organized because you don't want to have a big mess here. Then we have three versions of this project, all built right in. So you got full HD, that's a true 1920 by 1080 you got HDV 1280 by 720 you've got SD which is your old standard definition of 720 by 480 so you can literally bring in just about any format the only thing you'll need to concern yourself with is the frame rate and we'll get into that in a little more detail then we have a folder called the final output render this comp that's the comp that you will actually render to finish off your project and then we have a really big folder and this is components of viewfinder change with caution and the reason I put that note there is because you really don't need to ever go into this folder it contains all the little graphics that generate this screen mechanism right here that that basically creates your simulation and as we get into it you'll see this is very powerful you can change all the, the values and settings and make it look as real as you want it or as unreal as you want it to so we'll close that back up keeping everything everything neat so very first thing depending on what format you're going to be working in look at the footage you're bringing in and that will help you determine what format to work in 
So I'm going to go grab a piece of footage and the way I do that is, is I just double click in the project area and it just so happens here is my original scene and I'm bringing that in and I'm immediately going to dump that into footage from you. That way I keep things very organized. All I need to do is click on that and it tells me what format that this footage is in and it claims to tell me that it's at 720 by 480 27 seconds and 10 frames at a 23.976 frame rate which is basically 24p or the film frame rate now i gotta point something out it's very important that when you bring in footage that it does have the correct properties because if it doesn't it's not going to look right and i just happen to know because when we were experimenting with this she's on the other side of the country she had to FTP it up to my servers so she tried to compress it as much as possible not realizing that she had also changed the format so what I'm going to do just to show and prove a point and this is the first step you have to do anyways I'm going to just take this original footage and drop it right into a composition so that it has its own composition and automatically After Effects figures out and builds the composition to the same length and even to the right uh, dimensions. The problem is, if we look at this scene, it's kind of squashed because this was originally shot in HD. So the way to fix that, and you shouldn't have to do this because you really want to work with good, clean original footage, but for the intent of uh, and the purpose of this demo, I'm going to show you some of the mm, problems you could run into. Let's call it that. So what I'm going to do is on that original scene comp, I'm going to right click and I'm going to force a change. And that change is I'm going to turn this into an HDV HDTV 720. And you'll notice that there is no 24 frame rate, but I can do that after the fact. So now I've at least got the right aspect ratio. Now I just need to change the frame rate and so now we have a basically a custom preset if you will you can save this preset but i wouldn't recommend it otherwise you're going to have a million presets and it's not not a good way to go it's easier to just change it particularly in this in this uh project because it's going to be a really short project anyway so there we have it and now we notice that this is obviously crunched down because like i said she crunched it down quite a bit I need to get this footage to fit the full screen and the way you do that is simply go into the comp itself onto the layer that contains the footage right click and do a transform fit to comp and now we're back to what it's supposed to be so this is just a couple of little tricks so that you can kind of evaluate and see hey is this footage out of whack its aspect ratio is not correct whatever you'll never know until you actually have the footage. Sometimes customers don't know what they're doing or they don't know how to render something out correctly. This is the real world. The key thing is the end result that you're gonna deliver is going to match specifically what they need. So get the specifications correct. Now that we have all that aspect ratio stuff fixed and everything looks good, the first thing I wanna do is, and this is where we use one shortcut key, Control D is in dog. I am going to duplicate this comp. So basically highlight the original scene comp, duplicate, and now we have original scene two. And all you need to do now is press enter so that you can rename that. And I'm going to call that the trim scene. And you will understand why we call it that in a second. What I wanna do is I wanna open up the trim scene just by double clicking on it. I don't need the original scene right now. I just want the trim scene. What I need to do is either figure out where I'm going to cut in and see what kind of a time frame we have to work with before she drops the camera again. So right there she drops the camera and here is where she has it in front of her eye. So. I could literally sit here and start calculating out how many frames I need, etc. But because I'm lazy and I don't have a calculator handy, I'm just going to zoom in by sliding this little slider here. And I am basically going to look and see 
where I want to have her literally cut the scene where she switches over to the special effect. And I could do it right there. I could do it right there. I could give her a little bit of leeway and then cut however you want to do it. This is where creativity comes into play. But I'm just going to say right there. And all I need to do is take the trim bar or basically the project length bar and set the beginning or open or in point right at that point. Now I'm going to move forward and roughly go to right where she drops the camera. Right about there. She's not really looking there. That's her last look and now she's not looking. So I, I think I'll cut it right there. So I'm going to just slide the comp trim bar over and now I right click on that and I say trim comp to work area. Now we have a nice little short comp and we don't even need to calculate anything. It just so happens that uh, this comp is the length that's going to tell us how long of a piece of footage we need to put into the simulator. So now that we have that length we're good. I'm going to go back to the original and I'm going to see if there's anything that we can use and I happen to know in this piece of footage there is because in the second time where she lifts the camera the cut was over to the subject that she's supposedly photographing. The problem with that scene is it's not really intuitive to the human eye in the sense of or the brain of the storyline and you know it, we're, we're going from this scene to this scene yeah it kind of gives you the idea that she's taking a picture of this person and then it pops back but i think we can do a lot better so what i want is this scene right here so once again i am going to duplicate the original scene and now I'm going to open that new original scene and we're going to rename it again press enter we're going to say subject being shot now i'm in the subject being shot i know that i have this character here and again i'm going to do the exact same thing i'm going to mark the in point and out point and this can be approximate, it doesn't have to be super accurate, depending on how long your footage is. And let's go there, and boom. Right about there. And again, I'm going to trim this comp to the work area. So now we know we have the footage of the character that she's photographing. And in the trim scene, we know how long the shot needs to be. So what I can do is I can just simply take the subject being shot and lay it right on top of there and I notice that it's a little bit short. So what do we do in this case? Well we can either reduce the uh, scene where we have to go back into the original shot and look and see can we play with a shorter piece? Well let's look. Let's have a look at that. So here she's picking up the camera and what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to take that uh, subject being shot scene and layer it on top of here and just see what it looks like. I can slide that right over. So here she's lifting the camera and boom. And then she's still got the camera which would be okay. So it doesn't have to be that perfect. Maybe move it a little bit. So we, we know this, this scene will work. In other words, this is where we're going to add the effect. We know that this scene is good enough. I'm going to close this out because I don't need to work with that. The subject being shot, we know that that works. This is the trimmed scene of the subject being shot. And we don't need that either. We actually only care about the subject being shot. Now we can go into our actual work. 90% of your work is already done and you're gonna see why in a second. But before we get to that part where you really get to implement the effect, I wanna talk about one other thing. 
What if you don't have a scene in your footage that you have of the subject being photographed? This was kind of easy because I was able to just cherry pick it right out of the footage. But let's say you need to bring something else in. It's very simple. Again, double click. And I'm just going to grab a piece of footage because I know what the length is that I need. I'm going to drop that into footage from you again to keep things organized. And I'm going to take that piece of footage and drop it into a comp. And so you can see what that piece of footage is. Oh boy, it's some weird, crazy guy. I don't know who that is. But again, I just want to make sure that this fits the comp cleanly. And it seems to. All right, very good. And now what we can do is we know what the trim scene is or the subject being shot, I'm sorry about that, the subject being shot. So I can open that up again. And basically, this tells me the length because I figured that out through the trim scene, etc. So now I can literally just take this pre-keyed whatever of this crazy guy and lay it on here. And I'm just going to move my pointer, my time pointer, to the very beginning, to the zero point. And I'm just going to find out, oh, okay, maybe about, eh, maybe right about there, through there. And that's what we want to photograph. Or I could go a little bit more and then have him pop in and out. He's coming in. Click, click, click. So either way, now this is bringing in just a third piece of footage to use as a subject matter that's being photographed. I'm going to leave that there for fun and giggles, but I'm going to disable that layer so that we're back to the original here. Okay, so now that we have decided what our footage is going to be and looked at the two options, there is a third option, and a third option requires no footage. And that is uh, going to be explained a little bit later during rendering, where you basically render just the mask out with an alpha channel. That way, the editor can literally just overlay this special effect onto any footage that they deem fit. But let's get into the fun stuff now and uh, go to work. So I'm just going to close up this folder, kind of clean up a little up here. And I am going to open up a couple of, of these compositions. The first one is the indicator icons and setups. Double click on it and it opens it up. I'm going to also open up put your footage in here and simulator with your footage. The blur focus machine we don't need right now and I can get rid of these other uh, tabs because I don't need them anymore at this moment. Okay so you've got these three tabs open go to the put your footage in here tab and as you can see I've already dropped that in and for those that are beginning with After Effects, this is how you do that. Simply go to the footage from you, select the subject being shot, and drop it down into the comp. I'm not going to do that because it's already done. So, very simple, very straightforward. Now, you can simply go to the simulator with your footage, and you can immediately see the result. And you might only want to make a few changes. And this is where it gets really fun and powerful. So let me just show you and talk a little bit about what we have here. Obviously, we have to open and close the shutter, and this is really straightforward. It basically is in a simple opacity change with keys, keyframes. So basically, you can jump around and you can change and adjust this as needed. And all we're doing is changing the opacity from 0 to 100 and back down to 0, or vice versa, depending on how you want things to work. So as it goes over these keyframes, and I'm going to zoom in real quick, you'll see that we're at 0% opacity, then we go to 100% opacity, then still at 100%, that's basically the shutter, and now we're back open on the shutter. So you're basically taking a quick picture right in here, and we're talking maybe one or two frames. That's realistic. So that's your shutter. Then we have the focus beep sound, and you can align this up 
And what that has to do is, is some cameras actually, once they hit focus, they beep and let you know and it's ready to take a picture. Then, of course, we have the shutter sound, and you want to synchronize that with the shutter opening and closing somewhat. And again, this is just a matter of lining up the waveform to match the shutter opening and closing. So just keep those things in mind. As you start working with this, it'll all become very obvious and very straightforward. But you need to know that these things exist. Then, of course, we have the focus points. And again, these focus points are generated from yet another composition. And we'll go into that in a little more detail in a couple of seconds. Then we have the indicator overlay. If I turn that off, then you'll see all the indicators are gone. And we're going to get into detail about how you set those indicators. And it's really a lot of fun and easy. Then, of course, the black frame overlay. That's the actual outline, if you will, inside the viewfinder. So you want to leave that on. Then we have the blur focus machine. And what this does, this is another comp so that you can set uh, the focus and the blurring that typically happens when a lens is trying to focus in on a subject. So you can simulate that or you can just leave it if you have a fixed focus and you don't want to deal with that, turn it off. That's as simple as it gets. If you notice right now it's a little blurred because that's the lens trying to focus. If I turn it off it's always in focus. The zoom in and out simulator, this is another fun one. Again, keyframes. If you want to size your footage so that it looks like it's zooming in and out and blurring and all those kinds of things, you can take this as far and as realistic as you want. And then, of course, last but not least, your footage. And if I turn these off, then you'll see now you have a blank transparent simulator. And this is the way you do that third option. Just turn off the bottom three. And at that point, you now have a transparency. This checkerboard means transparent. And you can render this out, but you need to render it out with a transparency channel. And again, keep in mind, these things typically go two to three seconds, maybe. This one here is a little over one second for the action but I'm going to show you how you can make multiple shots for those people that are doing like three shots or speed shooting, uh, sports, sports events, that kind of thing. I'm going to turn these back on so that your footage is back in there. And uh, I just want you to make a note. If you just want to create the template to give to an editor so that they can overlay it on whatever scene they want, just turn these last three items off and then you are ready to render. So now let's have a look at some of the settings that are possible because this here can totally be manipulated to have any value in there that you want to simulate. So if you want to change your ISO or if you want to change your shutter speed or your f-stop and even number of maximum shots or this little light meter uh, adjustment pointer can be all manipulated through a very simple process and this is where we get into the indicator icons and setups so you'll see a list here of all kinds of things that go on and some of them are turned on and some of them are turned off and the best way to see what should be on and off is check with a camera that you own or ask a friend for a camera so that you can look through the viewfinder and see what all the possibilities are so for example, we have green ready to shoot, red not ready to shoot, and that's what this dot is all about here. So if I turn that off, it's gonna be red. So let's go back to where it's green. And again, this is keyframe, so you can adjust this and make it turn on and off and make it simulate like it's trying to focus. So, you know, just adjust the keyframes to whatever your needs are or turn it off and never be ready to focus and the red means it's never ready to shoot so if you need a simulation of where a camera just is malfunctioning or they just can't get the shot fast enough and you want to make it dramatic leave leave the green off and that way they can never take a picture then we have shutter speed 
and this is kind of interesting there are no settings here but there are in the shutter speed composition and now I'm going to show you because this rule or, or how these work is the same for shutter speed f-stop and many of these others and you'll see as you go through them and I encourage you to play and look and see what's going on with these but I'm just gonna go into shutter speed and the way I open this comp is all I need to do is double click on it and so here we are in shutter speed and you'll see there's a whole list of shutter speeds and you only want to have one ever selected so as you can see I've got that and if I turn that off that's all that is so let's say I want to go with 1 1 60th I turn that on or 1 16 hundredth make sure only one because see what happens it's, then it's 1880 so you always want to make sure it's only one selection at a time and that's pretty much the way all the others work we'll do one more I'm gonna close this because I don't need it and now you see it's 1600 let's go back to the icons let's hit the F stop and again only select one right now it's F8 let's open that puppy up and go to f1.8 remember got to turn off the other one otherwise there's no f8.8 1.8 cool you'll get the picture you get the idea close that and again now we have f-stop 1.8 and we can keep going change the iso turn the ISO icon on and off as you can see right here the little word ISO typically that's always on unless you're doing something really special with some cameras then the ISO value which changes this value once again you have a list of different values there we'll go to 6400 or let's go to just 200 because that seems to be a common ISO again close that and it's set it to uh, 200 there is a couple of other things uh, we have the white balance indicator if you look right here and if we turn that off it's that simple uh, plus minus those should actually go together so if you turn those both on and off or you can simulate and, and do all kinds of things then we have a flash indicator which of course shows that the flash is ready to go and the flash comp some of the cameras offer this that's an exposure compensation and I'm just showing you the different settings that all these and, and, and I encourage you to look through your manual to see how your camera actually functions uh, this is a black and white indicator little guy here uh, the plus there's all kinds and then of course the maximum burst this has multiple values so again double click open that up and you could say hey I've got a maximum burst of five whatever have you close that burst down again keep things organized go back to the icon indicators now you'll notice that here's the small asterisk in any case uh, you see all these settings now you'll notice that there's a couple of locked items here and the reason they're locked is because they are kind of unique for a unique purpose for example the EV scale is the actual scale so you never want to turn that off that's always on so leave that on at all times but these two here these last two locked items are basically special effects that have to do with what we call the flash red eye function on a camera and different cameras do this a little bit differently but what they do is they'll shoot off a pre-flash and the way they display this indicator the EV indicator to let you know that this is happening is as follows if I turn those on I'm just gonna turn one of them on because there's two different simulations here you'll see what's happening it basically does this cool like uh, Knight Rider thing and then pops them back off so that's a preset I've created for you let's have a look at the other one turn that on and go zoop so again it does it and pops off differently and you'll notice that the indicator is in the smack middle so in real time it looks something like that 
Let's look at the other one in real time again. And make sure you only use one at a time, obviously. So that's real time. And that's the way a camera actually does it. So if you do want to use that special effect, turn one of these guys on and then you don't have to worry about anything else. But let's worry, let, let, let's talk about the, the little pointer here. How do we adjust that? Well, if we go back into the simulator where your footage is, you'll see there is this one line called the indicator overlay. And if we double click on that comp, it shows a couple of different options one there's a glow so if i turn the glow on uh you're gonna get that kind of like uh gee my eyes are watery look so that's an option i tend to leave it off because usually it's pretty crisp and clear otherwise you can't see what you're shooting then we have the ev indicator programmer and this is basically nothing you can do here with it there's no no key frames or anything of the sort here but there is in the comp itself so if you double click on this indicator programmer you can now see the different points on that scale and it goes from minus two to plus two on the EV scale which is typical for many cameras and then we also have a couple of other things if you notice this little arrow here that means it's way under uh, illuminated so if I turn that off and on again if this pointer happens to be way below and you need to crank up the uh, or, or slow down the shutter speed then what happens is obviously if it goes below that little arrow may go on if it goes above let's just do a hypothetical let's just say uh, right I don't know somewhere here let's say it's above I'm just gonna just for sample sake show you this I'm gonna turn the overexposed arrow on and now of course both arrows are on I, I only should have one at a time on so it's either way over or way under and that's all those little arrows are for hope that makes sense I know it's confusing, but once you start playing with this, you'll start getting the grasp. All I wanted to do here in this simulation, which happens to be the one that I was using, I just wanted it to just kind of bounce around to show that the camera's trying to focus and get the lighting right. You know, that's for those people that don't like to use manual focus and manual adjustments, all auto. This is what a camera does. So basically, just think of it this way. This arrow is just pointing at all the different EV values which basically goes back to here so that you can see there's the pointer going and it starts off with being below just like in the simulator so you can program this to your heart's content play with it remember if you do totally mess it up you still have the original file so you can see how this all works all right so now that you understand that Pretty much everything can be programmed and made to look however you want. And you'll also notice on this little EV programmer, on the pointer, it's very short. It may be one or two frames. So if you go through this, you can rearrange these things as you wish. So if I want this guy to be here, boom, boom, he's jumping all over the place. There he may have gone over. So play with it whatever your heart's content. So like, for example, here, if I want to have that plus show up, there's the under range indicator, but I want the over range indicator on. And now I've got to bring in the actual over indicator to that point. Let's move that over a little bit. And this is just to show basically whatever you want. If let's say you want to make this jump multiple times, don't forget with using a simple control D, you can duplicate any of these locations and have multiples where it 
pops back to the same location and that would be a little bit more for the advanced user but you know play with this it's pretty fun and exciting and very very realistic okay so now that I've totally driven you nuts with that I'm gonna close the indicator I'm gonna get rid of the indicator overlay I don't need that we're working back with these three tabs and you're pretty much ready to go now at this point so let's put our footage back on I'm gonna turn the footage back on I'm gonna even put in the zoom in and out simulator and the blur focus machine and now you can see this is pretty realistic and boom okay so now that I've turned on all the footage you can see that basically everything looks pretty nominal except for one thing right here these little red dots are the focal points that the camera says hey this is in focus well that's not really true in this particular scene because the main thing that should be in focus and we'll go to that frame of focus right there this person is the focal point so really the only focal point that's hitting that is this center one and maybe this bottom one but certainly not these out here so to make this more realistic all I need to do is go into the focus points comp and now I can go and turn off as you can see maybe leave that one on which happens to be the center which is this one turn those three off and let's go to the 180 I believe it is yeah that one so we've got the post and let's go look at that so yeah the bench and the character and those are your two focal points and that makes it a little more realistic so looking at the focus points basically these are based on the degree starting at zero up here and then going to 45 90 135 and turn on only the ones that you need if you don't want the adjustment layer which basically what that does is it it, it kind of makes the red flash a little bit but if you just want solid red focal points turn off that adjustment layer and you're just gonna have red focal points and and that might be neater so those are all the little things and there's so many settings again if you play with this you'll get the hang of it really quick you can turn on the preview here if you don't remember what the picture looks like that the photographer is taking make sure you turn that back off you don't need the sound because you don't want to overcompensate and have multiple sound layers just think of those things as you're doing this all right so let's turn off this uh, tab here or get rid of it and now we've got the focal points everything's honky-dory and basically you are now ready to render and this is all you need to render so you don't actually render this comp what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kinda clean up a little bit here I'm gonna close some of these folders so that once again you can clearly see and you'll see the final output render this comp has a folder and that's what you're after and there is again three different sizes to match to three different potential uh, resolutions that this uh, uh, project can handle so we have everything we know it's gonna work we close all these tabs and since I was working in HDV uh, 720 by 1280 I'm going to open that and here you can see now this is ready to render as it is if you want to see what it looks like for real and actually hear what it does you simply do a pre-render so that you can actually get a good preview and this takes a couple of seconds so as you can see that was a quick simulation you can now go render out this footage However, you may not want to render all 30 seconds because as you can see, it's kind of, kind of like useless. Now, if you do want to save that, uh, that's up to you. But I would recommend just rendering out 
until it gets right there and give the editor a little bit of extra a couple of frames trim this comp down and you don't actually need to trim it you just need to move the comp work area bar to the length that you want to render and now you can literally simply go composition add to render queue and then pick your settings whatever you want uh, i'm going to do this in a straight mp4 h.264 and i'm going to save it someplace where it makes sense and we go to outs and i'm just going to call this uh, pov photographer and there you go and then render it out and that's a full mp4 and as it renders you can go have your cup of coffee or whatever have you so now that it's rendered let me show you what that looks like which is pretty obvious and there you have it so now the editor that uh, had you do this or whatever can take that clip insert it cut it in do whatever they need to with it to make their project or their movie look so much better all right so that's a completion and that's for a single shot but i want to show you just one more thing because i know some of you are going to ask about this i'm going to close this up again and i'm going to go back into my simulator with the footage and as you can see here we have the focus points the shutter sound focus beep shutter close and open yada yada if you have longer footage and you want to take multiple shots what i recommend is simply if you're using these highlight and do a control d and now you have a second set everything is doubled and while they're all still highlighted all you need to do is move them down a little bit and maybe do it one more time oops and move those guys down a little bit so now what we'll have with these three triggers or three shots if we go into rendering this we might want to expand this out just so we can see and let's go and pre-render this and see how it looks keeping in mind that your footage might be too short oops I started at the wrong point let's go from the beginning there we go let it go through its thing so as you can see now we have three trigger pulls instead of just one let's replay that again just so you get a good idea looks pretty realistic but that's all I wanted to point out that you can duplicate your four top layers and move them and adjust them and speed them up and slow them down as fast as you want like I said once you start working with this you'll start seeing the power and the functionality and the flexibility of this uh, wonderful project file good luck and good after effecting and uh, I hope to see you again soon with some other cool stuff Thank <laughs> you.